All right, so before we get started more specifically about public health, I wanted to spend some time um, sharing a little bit about what is the health sciences with you folks. So when we think about what is health sciences, um, health science refers to a large group of disciplines related to healthcare to humans and animals. And so that's through application of science, engineering, mathematics, and technology. So this is a, a great field where you build knowledge from science and other resources, but then you're also able to apply that knowledge, that resource in different ways. And so there's the practical and clinical aspects of health sciences, which overall the goal is to improve the health of living beings. And so on the screen, you'll see different health sciences programs that are available at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And it encompasses a, a broad range of occupations and specializations. And so, you know, there's gonna be a need for, for students to study in health sciences and eventually be able to work. Um, we need those skilled professionals in, in all aspects of health sciences, especially as we address different health issues in our community. Okay, so I'm gonna transition and talk more specifically about public health. So at UH Manoa, the um, Office of Public Health Studies, where um, our public health program lives, is under the Myron B. Thompson School of Social Work. And so I'll, I'll take you through what our program is all about, some of our resources, and things to look forward to. Um, in the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about, again, what is public health? And so public health focuses on health promotion and disease prevention. We look at how we can really promote and protect the health of people and the communities where they live, learn, work, and play. And so um, at the University of Hawaii at Manoa Office of Public Health Studies, we offer both bachelor's and also master's and professional degrees or graduate graduate degrees in public health and wanted to focus more a little bit on our studies for students who will be coming to or who plan to come to UH Manoa to pursue their undergraduate program. So we offer bachelors of arts in public health as well as a minor in public health. And so you'll see this graphic um, to the right of what public health in action looks like. Um, this, the State Department of Health has a Rethink Your Drink campaign, which many students, uh, many folks in the community have seen the push to drink more healthy water or drink healthier by choosing water instead. And so, you know, public health really focuses on that prevention piece. What are the, um, you know, in things that we can promote so that people can le live longer, healthier lives. We focus on vaccination, we focus on health communication, we look at what research we can do in order to understand how we approach diseases and how we can influence people to change their behaviors so that they live healthier lives. And, and so, you know, with current events around living in a pandemic right now, um, public health is really at the forefront of what we know to be ways we can understand, monitor, and respond to infectious diseases and outbreaks. Um, we also, through public health, coordinate and implement interventions to reduce disease. And so that's, for example, promoting um, the access to vaccination. And then also in public health, we really look at um, research to identify risk factors of different diseases. And so for folks that might um, be living and tuning in from Hawaii Island, there's a lot of um, up and coming information about rat lungworm disease, which is something that within the public health realm, we're really trying to learn and understand and being able to educate our communities about washing their vegetables and so forth. Some other examples in public health also, we focus on promoting healthy communities, promoting healthy behaviors, and also thinking about how our environments really play an integral role in how we can live healthier lives, right? And so with public health, what we focus on is understanding that health is more than just your genetic code, but knowing that your zip code can have those influences on healthy outcomes and how healthy you can be. Are there sidewalks in your communities? Are there crosswalks? Are there um, parks and you know, community gardens? And so 
those are all of the different examples of what public health is. And I wanted to spend some time kind of walking through that, through what public health is with all of you, since this is such a broad field, but also a great field for um, students to study. Um, and, and one of the best ways to get started with learning about public health is through our Intro to Public Health course. Um, and so Public Health 201, Introduction to Public Health, is a very great place to start. Even if students are wanting to explore and trying to think about whether public health is for them, um, this is a great class that really introduces students to the different concepts of in public health. So really focusing on population health, what disease prevention means, what does that look like? Also discussing health systems and also the professions within public health. What are some careers or what do pro public health professionals do? One great thing about this class um, is that it fulfills uh, one of the general education requirements with the University of Hawaii system, which is our diversification of social sciences. So at the very least, you could take our class to you know, learn a little bit about what public health is. And if you decide, yo, this is something I wanna you know, continue on, um, you know, it's a major that's here for you. It's a minor that you can also add on to um, any other, uh, you know, degree pathway you're thinking about. And so if you are thinking, oh, is public health a degree? Um, you want to pursue what are some things that are unique about our program that you would gain? Um, and so some of the things specifically is, again, you get a nice broad foundation and understanding, uh, building breadth about the field of public health. Um, what really, one really neat thing about our degree program is students get to choose a project topic that they get to build depth or deeper understanding in. Um, it could be a public health issue that they see relevant in their communities or in their families. Um, and so you build a greater understanding about that public health issue. And then we also help facilitate um, field experience or research or hands-on experience that you get to complete under a mentor who is an expert in a particular public health area that you find interest in. And then also we really try to connect students with the public health um, professional community through different professional organizations, but also through bringing in guest speakers in all of our different classes to speak on the work that they, that they are doing um, to really help, again, enhance our communities uh, health in different ways. Um, one example of what our public health students are doing right now in light of the, again, living in a pandemic, um, is students are really getting some hands-on experience of volunteering. Um, and so our students were highlighted in the University of Hawaii news article. Um, on the next slide, you'll see uh, a few photos of our students that have volunteered with our medical reserve corps. So they were mobilized in um, outreach in the community, being able to support the efforts in uh, supporting different communities um, that are managing through this pandemic. And so uh, helping as call centers at this State Department of Health to spread the word about, um, you know, what the community can do in light of what is going on. And so, you know, really hands-on opportunities that our students have through public health to really make a difference in, in, in the public health work that's going on. Um, so that's a little bit about what public health is, some great things about our program that might, um, you know, really sh to start to show a little bit more about what public health is and what students can gain from studying public health. Um, and so if you want to get in touch with me, um, I work as the academic advisor for our undergraduate program where students, um, if at any level, if you want to, you know, have a discussion of what public health is, um, we can start there and we can also talk about what it, what would it look like to be a public health major, what your requirements would, what, what your requirements entail. But also if you're thinking about graduate programs or what your next steps could look like in the public health just continuum, I'm happy to help at all levels of your educational career. And so um, I am accessible right now through virtual meetings. Um, so feel free to reach out via email and we can connect that way. So I think now I will turn it over to Kiana to um, share a little bit more about our pre-health pre-law advising center. Thank you all.
Thanks, Michelle. Um, and thank you so much to P20 for coordinating this entire event. I really appreciate it. And thank you to all of you for joining us, especially during this crazy time right now. Um, I really appreciate to, um, you know, this opportunity to share information with you. So as mentioned earlier, I'm Kiana Shiroma. I'm from the Pre-Health Pre-Law Advising Center at UH Manoa. And we are a little bit of a different office um, in the sense that we provide advising for um, general pre-health and pre-law students. And what also makes us unique is that we are open to the public. So regardless of whether or not you go to UH Manoa for your college, um, you can always contact us and um, see if we can help you with any information that you need. Um, to be a little bit more specific about pre-health, we advise on uh, more specifically on the fields listed here. So with these fields, you need a bachelor's degree and then you can apply to let's say medical school, dental school, and so forth. And so we are not um, specifically focused on a certain major. Um, it doesn't matter you know, what you choose to major in, it's more so just getting the degree and then moving on to the next health professional school. And so this is our website here. Um, and then we had the link earlier in there um, as well. So you can go to our website and we try to put on as much information as possible because we're open to the public. Um, also, there are some um, community colleges out there that do not have a pre-health advisor. And so um, with those schools, I work a little bit more closely with them. And so if you can't find information from your community college or your, your university, then you can look on our website to, uh, for possible helpful information. And so when you click on health, you see um, the list here of the fields that we advise on. And I did wanna go a little bit further though into being a pre-health student. So not to scare you, um, but I do want to prepare you right off the bat in that um, you know, most medical schools, I'm sorry, most health professional schools, including medical school is um, very uh, competitive. So just nationwide, um, six out of 10 medical school applicants are not accepted. So it's a very competitive field and not to scare anybody off, but the reason why I'm telling you this is that we want to focus on making sure that the quality of your education is of most importance, not the quantity. So for these kinds of schools, it doesn't matter how many credits you've taken a semester or how quickly you've graduated. It's about quality. So how well you do in your classes, how well and how rich your application is overall. So very generally speaking, um, you know, being a pre-health student would involve three areas. So it'd be experiences, GPA and entrance exam. And I'm gonna go a little bit further into these areas. So um, when you click on, on a specific field, um, they all have these same kind of sections there. So explore, prepare, and apply. And so when you click on that first part, explore uh, is making sure that this is the right field for you because uh, this is gonna be a really long journey for you. It's gonna take a lot of time, money, and energy. So first off, my main concern is making sure that you choose the right career path for yourself. And this comes from experience, from actually seeing what that field is like. And so we have a listing here um, specifically for pre-med students. And these are the areas in which medical schools want you to gain some experience in so that they can make sure and you can make sure that it's the right field for you. And so what's a little bit tricky now though, is that with this pandemic, it may be a little bit trickier to get shadowing and volunteering and these kinds of more hands-on experiences. And so what to do now is to attend online events, just like how you're doing now, which is great. There are tons of other online opportunities, um, which would be like webinars, um, you know, virtual shadowing, things like that. So, and then when you can, and when it is safe to do so, then I do recommend shadowing when possible. And so 
excuse me, um, some ways that you can find opportunities is going to our Instagram page here. And we list a variety of different uh, ways that you can still learn about your particular uh, career or even just um, generally what the health field is like with these kinds of different opportunities that are occurring online. So please feel free to uh, follow us and then um, you know, look at just kind of scan opportunities that uh, come up as we get them. So um, let's say that you are really certain, like you know you want to pursue a career in medicine or a career in dentistry. Then the next part would be to prepare, right? So going on to that next section of the pie would be GPA. And so for medical school, um, as well as all of the other fields that we advise on, we list a general recommended, I'm sorry, general recommended course listing um, for each field. And so as you can see here, as well as other fields, a lot of the prerequisites are science and math classes, right? So um, whether you are a current high school student, um, you wanna make sure that you're getting as many of these classes as possible so that you can be better prepared once you enter college. And for those who recently graduated, congratulations, that's amazing, really excited for you. Um, when you do register for your classes, which if you are attending UH Manoa um, or a UH Community College, then that should have been um, done already. So if um, you have already registered for your classes, then make sure that you have um, at least biochemistry and if possible math already registered and ready to go for fall. And if not, then we can work with you about changing your schedule. Um, but because these are popular classes, we wanna make sure that you um, get a seat in these uh, classes so that you can progress with the prerequisites there. And so, um, you know, regardless of what classes you take, I do recommend that you do well in them, right? Um, make sure that you do quality over quantity, which is what I mentioned earlier, right? So that involves going to class, um, taking lots of notes, and then keeping your textbooks. And that's because um, in addition to that, uh, we do have um, the entrance exam, which uh, will be testing the content in these science and math classes that you'll be taking now. Um, so I did want to mention to um, kind of switching gears a little bit is that we do have early acceptance programs um, that are available in certain fields. And so let's say you're like really sure that this is the career for you then what that means is that if you're accepted into this early acceptance program, then um, basically you'll have a seat for you, ready for you uh, once you graduate with your bachelor's degree, which is huge, right? Because I just mentioned how competitive it is for medical school. And so um, this is an option for you to consider. And what's great about these kinds of programs is that um, there's no risk for you in terms of you know, whether or not you uh, want to stay in it throughout your undergrad career. If you decide you don't wanna do dentistry or you don't wanna be a doctor, or you, you might want to switch to attend another um, program, then that's totally fine. You can just stop out and there will be no kinds of consequences. So for you, it, it just would be like a um, placeholder, right? Like um, a safety net basically. So let me know um, if you have any other questions or concerns about this later on and I can talk more in depth with you then. Um, so to find us uh, or to schedule an appointment with us, you can just go back to our home screen and then click on the academic advising button and then it'll take you through the steps to schedule an appointment with us. And so that's us in a nutshell, but like I said earlier, we have a ton of information on our website. So please feel free to um, go in and you know, get more information or just contact us directly. Um, so again, what to do now um, would be to meet with us and then also Michelle, if you're thinking about um, you know, majoring in public health and then to also attend the advising orientation events for whatever institution that you're attending. So for UH Manoa, um, we do have an advising guide to help you determine who exactly is your advisor, how to schedule an appointment and whatnot. And then we also have a summer advising program for UH Manoa specifically. So you can go to that website to get more information, uh, but you should have gotten that um, through email um, if you were accepted at UH Manoa already. But if not, then you could just email them directly for that as well. 
Um, so I'm going to end there. Um, so we have some time for questions. Um, so yeah, please feel free to type in your questions in the chat box and um, let us know if we can give you any more information. Thank you. Kiana, Michelle, I, I have a question. Uh, you know, now that we're moving to this post COVID uh, environment, uh, are a lot of the classes moving towards uh, an online um, an online class schedule and an online facilitation model? Go ahead, Michelle. <laughs> so um, thanks okay, for, take for that. <laughs> yeah. um, for that question, I know I can speak a little bit um, about the discussions that are having it, that we're having internally as a department. Our our program is fairly small um, in the sense that you know, um, as an undergraduate program, we have about 160 students at one point at any point. Um, and so our classes range from you know as little as uh, ten students to our largest classes, our intro class, which is um, about you know between eighty to one hundred students, depending on the interest per semester. Um, and so we're we're actively having those discussions of what they'll look like. Um, and I think we're definitely keeping in mind students' health and safety of how we can deliver our courses. And if it is um, limited to um, providing an online experience for our students, a lot of our faculty are having discussions of how to continue being really more engaged in how they deliver the content um, through um, synchronous classes or classes that meet at the same time in a, through virtual delivery, um, or if there are ways to do a hybrid model of a combination of in-person as well as um, online uh, courses. So more to come. I know that's active discussions we're having and I think the university will have um, more, uh, you know, solidified information available in the coming weeks. Students are really interested in internship programs um, and internship opportunities that they can, they can gain like real working experience while going to school. Um, can you share a little bit more about some of the internships that, that you guys know of or or are there opportunities like that through public health? Yeah, so so built into our degree program is a really exciting. Um, what we call it is our applied learning experience where students take a series of three classes and then the second class of that series is where students, every student in the bachelor's degree program actually have a field experience. So that's gaining about 100 to 120 hours of whether it's research or um, like a experience, a service learning experience um, with a mentor. And then we facilitate that, that matching. So students don't actually have to look for that experience on their own. It's uh, something our department um, plays an active role in in making that connection. I got kind of a little uh, a com complex question. Uh, if you get a degree and then choose to go back to school, are you able to use the credits from your degree before, uh, before the current degree you're trying to achieve now? So I guess, I guess they're asking if, if you have a college degree already and, and is it possible for you to use the credits from that uh, to enter into a public health discipline? Ooh, that's a good question. So, um, generally speaking, for um, like health professional schools like medicine and dentistry, um, that should be fine. The credits would be considered. The courses would be, um, you know, included in covering the prerequisites. However, um, you know, on the other hand, there are some fields like occupational and physical therapy that have a really short expiration, um, meaning that you only can take the classes within the last five to seven years. So in those cases, uh, oftentimes it may not, right? But then if that happens, then um, we would just recommend just taking the prereqs again so that they would fall within that time period that the schools allow for. Um, and I'll let Michelle talk about um, public health. Yeah, no, that's, um, thank you, Kiana. I, I, um, I know that was a very complex question, Gus, so I appreciate, I think there's different ways you could approach it. And I think um, I, I would recommend uh, this, you know, students thinking about what a second degree seeking student means if you already earned a bachelor's degree. And then if you come back to pursue a second degree, there are some limitations in how um, you would fulfill the requirements for that second degree. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a question about JABSUM, the John A. Burns School of Medicine. Uh, and the question is, uh, 
Japsum used to have a direct admit program for high school students. Is there any update on if or when they will offer this again for students? So currently we still have that program on hold because we're trying to determine how to best support the students in that program. Um, however, uh, we did have another program that we created. So uh, that would be the early acceptance programs that I mentioned earlier. But this one is um, with Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. So it's a little bit of a different type of medicine. However, it still has that same kind of uh, opportunity for incoming students. And also um, students who are currently attending UH Manoa can um, apply for that one as well. Thank you so much for sharing all this wonderful information today. And I thank all the students for coming in and spending some time to learn about their future. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a good day. Aloha, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.